for staying tuned with the OVA episode 7 on how to finish up all of these graphs, make them look pretty, and at the same time calculating your slope uncertainties. What I'm going to do is, before I do all that, I'm going to copy and paste my graph because I want to work with a new clean one and not having to tamper with this one here. Ah, there you go. I'm going to make this a little bit clearer by making my total or the the equation for my line a little bit larger, the actual one. And uh, you might notice that this is smaller than my minimum slope. The problem, you can look back into the previous video to check what the problem was. And of course, I mentioned a few ways you can tackle that in the previous video. I am not going to touch on that in this video because I'm only going to talk about how you can analyze these slopes. If I had to use this data to work with for my slope, I have my max slope with appropriate units, which is seconds per meter to the power of a half. My maximum slope is 1.965656, no rounding yet. My minimum slope, also in seconds per meters to the power of a half, is 1.8657. My y uncertainty, my max, max y intercept, Units are in seconds. This is negative 0.0648. My minimum y uncertainty, no, sorry, minimum y intercept in seconds is negative 0.0002. So to calculate the slope uncertainty in units of seconds per meters, power of half, entering functions. This is equal to max minus min, max minus min, divide by 2. That's your slope uncertainty. For your y-intercept uncertainty, sometimes you might be required to do this because sometimes the y-intercept has significance to analyze. Again, this is the max, which is, in this case, this guy apparently. The maximum minus the min, minus the min, divided by 2, gives you your uncertainty in your y. I'm actually going to need to round my slope uncertainty appropriately depending on depending on the significant figures. So my uncertainty is always to one significant figure. So this is to the hundreds place, format cells, two significant figures. And same thing here. For the y, it turns out that I also needed to round this to the hundreds place. So convenient. Okay, so here we go which means when I adjust this up here, the equation on my chart, I need to round this accordingly. My slope uncertainty is round to the hundreds place, so I also need to round this up to the hundreds place, which turns into 1.84. It also turns this guy over here to, to the hundreds place, so this will be 0.06. Now, of course, you might reason that because I'm using probably an inappropriate value for the minimum slope and, and its y-intercept, that this may not be so accurate as well as the uncertainty. And when you do this, and let's say you chose to analyze your data this way, you can always talk about this in your evaluation or your discussion. Although it would be even better if you made the adjustment in your analysis and then talked about how your new method may or may not have worked. Anyhow, these are some kind of like the last steps to finish off what you're doing for this lab, at least for the non-optional portions. The optional portion, which is an analyzing the slope itself, which you may not need Excel to do. You can also do it hand-drawn if you choose to. But this is kind of the last piece to the puzzle, your OVA, episode 7. I hope I do not have to make another OVA. I know you love this series so much. I'm just kidding. But in case I do need to make another OVA episode 8, I will do so. Otherwise, consider this to be the end of the series. Thank you for watching episode 7 on Excel. Thank you for bearing with me and watching the videos in these series. Hopefully you got something out of these videos. And hopefully you now have an actual extra toolbox 
when you are writing up your lab reports. Again, good luck with your own data and see you next time on my channel. Bye now.